What's going on, everybody? Today we got uh, the part two with Gem Mint grading, otherwise I call him GMG. It's going to be questions and answers pertaining to the comments from the first video. And we had about 10 or 11 questions on there. Um, Eric from GMG answered them all out. There's some parts of the video towards the end to where he shows the back of the card being graded and how they determine a borderless card center. Really interesting stuff. Now, just real quick background onto this. Um, we did this from uh, Eric's house because he didn't want to do it from his office due to distractions such as phones, people coming in, asking questions, and all that, which was great for the privacy part of it all to where there was no distractions really into it. We were kind of on a little bit of time uh, uh, restraint onto it with how long we could go. We went over it, actually. Um, so I was thankful because we got to go get through everything we wanted to do. The other part was there was some low bandwidth going on with the uh, stream itself that we were recording off of Zoom. We had to redo a couple parts of it, and I put it together or sent the whole thing out to Eric and asked him, "Do you just want to redo the whole thing, or would you just want to take the questions and answer them out?" And he came out and said, "Just publish it. I'd rather it be live the way we did it. If there's faults in it, that's fine." He said, because I don't want it to look like this was something scripted at all. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and do it that way. So, no, there's parts of the video where it looks like it's freezing for a few. There's parts where, uh, uh, the I guess you could say the voice part of it cuts in and out. But there's a lot of key elements, good stuff, good information on there. He did ask that if you guys had any further questions to go ahead and do it. Uh, put them in the comment section, stuff like that. And then I'm going to go over a few things right after we come back from this video, everybody. So I'll see you guys in a few. All right, welcome, everybody. Another video at you. I got uh, Eric here from Gem Midgrade. And otherwise, you guys hear me say GMG. This is part two of the video to where we got all the questions Eric's got a copy of them there just in case uh, the connection starts going a little crazy on us here. But we're going to go through a Q&A on it. The video itself has hit over 3,100 views currently. It had over, I think, 150 likes, 110 comments. Overall, everybody seems very pleased with the product. And you are the very first person to actually show how this computer intelligence, however it's going to be worded, is actually being used. And I think a lot of people are thankful because the curiosity out of that is gone now. People have a better understanding of it. So I know on behalf of myself and a lot of subscribers I talk to and friends and stuff, we say thank you for that because we've been clueless with this whole process of how this would work. Um, I know we're short on time, guys, with him because he has another meeting. So I'm going to pop right into the questions here. And then he's going to cover anything that we've missed and share some other information here with us. So, Eric, I'm going to go ahead and move forward here. Um, the first question is a lot of people want to know, will you start sleeving the card inside the slab? Okay, Jason. Well, Jason, first of all, I want to thank you for having me today. I want to um, want to tell you how much I appreciate you reaching out to me. Um the, the the please bear with me my voice is about gone i'm on the phone about 20 hours a day it feels like right now so i'll try to talk as precise and clearly as i can um the first question you want to know about is sleeving the cards at this time we have no um we have really no uh thought process into sleeving the cards at this time uh first of all there's a, there's a few reasons that card companies do not sleeve those cards and i'll, I'll be up front and frank about it um, number one, when you when you try to sandwich the card into the slab or the encasement, um, that sleeve is really slick. And you can imagine having somebody in, encasing cards, maybe that's not maybe not a card collector, but they work for us and they learn how to encase that card. It takes just a very little bit of movement in our in our um, sonic welding machines to move that. And if that thing were to get uh, um, slabbed or sealed in a, uh, the wrong form or fashion, we could ruin a card. Um, it, it would it would definitely crease a card. It would definitely put an indention in a card, and it would definitely mar that card for the rest of its life. So that's one of the reasons most of the card companies do not use a mylar sleeve 
um, inside of their cases. The second reason um, being in my personal opinion is that case does not get a 100% good seal with that, with that Mylar sleeve on there because it doesn't allow the two pieces of plastic to touch each other um, when they're in the, the uh, uh, sonic welder. So again, we do not have, um, at this time, we do not plan on making that switch. I know several people have asked for that switch, but I will tell you that that process is a very cons consumative process. It takes a lot more time and there has to be, you have to be the utmost careful with your cards when you're using that process. Okay, that sounds pretty good there. I didn't know that with all that, appreciate it. All right, next question is, are you gonna start grading the autographs on the card of a scale one to 10? And will you be able to show that grade on your slab? I know you said the autograph authentic, or how to do, I can't even get, there we go, authenticate the autos. You do have a process as well, if you want yep. to explain that. Yes, we do not authenticate autographs. I am not an autograph, uh, an autograph authenticator. I never claim to be and don't want to be. Um, we use a third party source for authentication. The nice thing about the way that we do it is we don't have to send the card to somebody else to have it authenticated. With our software, when we do a scan, we can actually send the scan to the third party authenticator. They can actually look at it through our software program and they can give us back a uh, authentication on the, on the um, autograph and they can tell us actually where the pin marks are that allow that autograph to be authenticated. So I guess the easiest way for me to explain that to somebody is, is everybody's signature has a specific stroke and a pressure point and a release point. And when you do an autograph, if you have the same pressure points and release points, where the pin is put down and where the pin is picked up or the marker or what have you, um, that's more of a case in authenticating an autograph than it is the actual look of the autograph itself. So um, I guess, what I'm trying to say is, is we don't actually have to send the card to the third party authenticator with our software and our, in our um, resolution of our images through our software, they can actually look at it on their end. They can actually send us back an authentication and they will also send us back and tell us, you know, if there's anything in that autograph that maybe um, is a little bit off or if it's smudged or if it's, you know, maybe, uh, um, not exactly the way that the autograph presented itself uh, 10 years ago, but it is today per se. Take a, um, trying to think of an autograph that we've done that's changed over time. I'll, I'll tell you one, Don Mattingly's autograph over time changed. Early in Don Mattingly's career, his writing wasn't nearly um, as, as uh, defined as it is later on in his career. So uh, some guys change their autographs a little, have a little more eye appeal to them once they've started to sign quite a bit. So that's one of them. But um, as far as autographs go, it's a pretty simple process for us right now. So um, we're going to continue to use what we have. And again, we don't want to be auto autograph authenticators. We've got, uh, we've got a service that'll do that for us. Will you still be able to grade the autos as like um, nine, five, 10, like a 10 being it's clear and stuff? Or are you staying away from that? No, we're not. We're going to do that. I mean, you know, in my eyes, um, that that to me, in my eyes, would be through the software system. We would be able to tell if there's any smudging um, degradation to that autograph through the software, just like a surface uh, a surface grade on a card. Um, you know, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I think, you you know, when you look at the autographs on a lot of cards, unless they're really, really old, you know, maybe 60, 80 years old, um, the autograph is what it is. Now, if they're even on the new cards, you see sometimes you see a little bit of smearing on there where their hand might have wiped across it or something like that. Um, I think that's a parameter that we have built into our software that will tell us, you know, if maybe it's degraded a little bit. But as far as getting the, the auto, if, if, if it's authentic and we know it's authentic, we will give you a grade on it. Um, if we think that it's not authentic or if the third party authentication company we use says it's not authentic, we will not grade the card at all. We'll send it back to you as, as non authentic. Okay. All right. Moving on. Next question. A lot of people like the clear slab vote versus the smoky looking slab. And you know, I'm talking about the edges around the uh, slab itself. 
Um, basically, they're just asking if there's you're going to be changing into a new mold at all to where there's clear slabs or you're going to leave the smoky out. And then also with the mold part, are you going to be able to start doing thicker cards, 100.130.180s? Good question. And, and I've had that question brought up twice on a co phone conversation today. Actually, Joey um, hit me up about that. And then a friend of his, Brian Jeffs, um, hit me up about that today. Um, right now, we can do up to 85 point um, cards with the molds that we have. We have two new molds coming out. I'm hoping within the next 30 days, we have 120 and 135 point mold coming. And then um, we are wanting to get uh, a mold up to 360. Um, we've had some requests for some very, very thick patch cards, bat cards, bat knob cards, stuff like that. So we're working on that. Um, molds are very expensive, just like uh, sonic machines, um, welding machines. They're very, very expensive. So a new company like ours, we've had a lot of outlay moving into this space, um, trying to do everything correctly, not putting the cart or the, the you know the cart before the horse. We want to make sure we're good with what we have and we're currently you know, moving forward. But at the same time, we're, we're all about innovation. We want to move forward. We want to be able to offer you all the services that we can. Um, with that said, I do want to make a comment. We've had a lot of calls for uh, Pokemon cards, different cards like that. We're not doing that. We're doing sports cards only. Um, myself, the co-founders, the owners, um, we're sports fanatics. We're sports freaks. Uh, we grew up with sports cards, um, and we're sticking to sports cards. We're not, we're not into the Pokemon. So I, I don't know that realm at all. And I don't even want to venture there. So, but as far as the slabs go, we are, we're innovating. We're going to move forward with those slabs. And, uh, just as soon as they come online, we'll make a, we'll make a note of it on our Facebook page, as well as our website. And we'll let everybody know whenever, uh, those slabs are available. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Uh, the next one was some of the color coordinating makes it hard to read the label. And I know this is going to reach into a couple different pieces, but where do you are you able to like change that around to where the color matching is easier to read on the eyes and with the pictures? And then all that goes into like the subgrades mostly um, with that, with this question, if you're able to make them pop out more. I don't know if outlining them or something. Good question. Help. And I'm, I, I'm glad that you asked that. I'm glad you asked that question. I want to back up just real quick. I forgot to answer one of your questions on the last question. You asked if we had any thoughts on going to the clear slab versus the smoke slab. Um, look, I think everything that we do um, in, in integrating in the, in the card slabbing and the label business, I think that it's all in the eye of the beholder. I think one person can look at one person can look at this card and they'll say, man, that thing is beautiful. Another guy look at it and he say it just doesn't do anything for me. You know, it's not what I want. You know, I grew up um, with PSA slabs, and we kind of fitted our slab to a PSA slab. And I, I don't, I don't mean this in any other way, but you know, if you want to, if you want to follow somebody, follow the best. I guess is the question, and everybody says that PSA does the, you know, somehow that they're, they're the best. I don't know where that comes from. I mean, I've used Beckett, I've used PSA, I've used, I've used them all. We've, we've done them all. So, um, but I do like the slab because I think it fits in the hand very um, ergonomically. I think that it's it's lightweight. I think that it's not too thick. Um, I think that you can stack five, six, eight, ten of these things up on top of each other. And I think they're very easy to handle. Um, they fit in the sleeve in the sleeves that we can get every day of the week very very quickly. Um, I know some of the bigger, thicker slabs don't fit in some of the sleeves, so you have to special order them. So with that said, we plan on using the slab that we have until um, the customer tells us later on, hey, we, don't, we won't buy those slabs or we don't want those slabs, and then we'll make an adjustment if we have to. Um, back to the question you just asked. Um, I guess the labels come down to the eye of the beholder as well. Um, you know, we have full, we have four full time designers and then I have about five or six designers when we start getting really busy, which we've been very busy this week that I can call upon to help us design just labels. Everybody has a different preference. Everybody has a different feel, um, likes a different color scheme. Here's what I've told my designers. If somebody wants a custom label, we'll do it any way they want to do it. We'll, we'll ask them questions. We'll say, okay, 
What do you want to see in a custom label? What do you want to see in a custom design? How do you want it to feel and look? If we're going to do the custom design or if we're going to do this design in-house, we've got to have some sort of parameter that this is what we're going to do for our labels through GMG and we got to keep it there. So what I've told our designers is try to keep the colors matched to the kind of like umpiring in baseball. If you're not umpiring, nobody ever knows you're there. That's what I think a label needs to do. I think a label needs to be seen. It needs to present the information that you want in a very, very um, um, unique way. But at the same time, I think the label should not take away from the card. It should add to the beauty of the card or add to the color scheme of the card to make it very, very eye appealing. So sometimes um, I know the colors on these new cards, the prisms, some of the, the chrome cards, they're hard to match. They're hard to get to look the same. But at the same time, we want to try to do our very, very best to make that card look top end when it's in that case, when it's in that slab. Everybody wants to say, everybody wants to look at it and go, man, look at my Kawhi card. You know, look at my Leonard card. Look at the label on thing. Well, if it all matches, the label shouldn't take any eye traction away from the card, in my opinion. So if they match colors, and I, I mean, I hope that that's very easy to read for most people. Um, what we did do, though, after your video did um, run, Jason, is we did go back and we looked at the name and the grades and the and the the lettering, and we actually reduced the size of the player name and we actually increased the size of the numbers on the grades. So we we increased it about another twenty two percent on the label um, since your first uh, video that you did on us. So I hope that these next cards that are coming to you, Jason, you like a little bit a little bit better, and I hope your your uh, your uh, fan base out there that watches this video. I hope they get a better understanding of how um, we do listen to the customer and we want to we want to make those changes because without the customer, um, we're just another number and we don't want to be a number. We want to be somebody that the customer can trust, they can count on and uh, we want we want to we want to earn their business, not we just don't want to get their business. We want to earn their business, Jason. Oh, well, that's outstanding that you already implemented some changes onto it. I like that because it does make it look pop out a lot more. And you've gone away from the traditional all same font going across like some of the other companies out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, next one was, are you going to have another means for security so people don't crack your slab and take the label out to put in another holder that you can buy off of eBay? Basically <laughs> the old swapping it out into a new holder thing. I mean, are you going to have yep. your, your name or something engraved into the mold? Glad, glad you brought that up. We are working with a, uh, a laser technology company that has a machine that will actually laser etch our, our slabs in-house. Um, we're a little bit behind the eight ball on this. I wish we could have done this when we started. And what, what I want to do, everybody knows that most of them have their label or their, their lettering or, or whatever they want to use for their logo down in here somewhere or up in here somewhere. We want to do it a little bit differently. Um, what we would like to do is we would like to be able to etch them in-house and we would like to be able to not only put our logo, but we would also like to be able to put your name or your um, business um, on the logo as well. So let's just put it to you this way, Jason. I would like to be able to put my logo somewhere and then I would like to be able to put extreme, extreme card breaks right here somewhere. Um, now what would make it nice is if we do be able, if we are able to do it in house is this is the nice thing. If you purchased a slab off of us that does not have it, if you'll send it back to us when we get this capability, which should be coming in the next few weeks, if you'll send the slab back to us, we'll do it for free. We'll, we'll make it so that it, it's exactly the way that you want it on your slab. So, um, yes, we would like to do that. And we are going to do that. Um, I saw a lot of comments on your, uh, on your video that people wanted us to do that. So myself and a couple and the other two co-owners, they went right to work. They said, let's go find a company. Let's see how this works. Let's see what we can do, how we can make it happen. 
Because in other words, if we don't do it that way, we have to go out and buy a brand new kit so that it works for everybody and we can go back in and do the cards that we've already done and send out to customers. So um, with that said, um, we are going to do something really quick. Yep. Okay, nice. And that kind of goes into the next question with the name on the back. I know that's an option that you told me, like how I put extreme car brakes in the back of the label. So if somebody would buy that card and they don't want my extreme card breaks on it, are you able to re-slab it and then the cost is what somebody was asking? We are. Um, what we're willing to do is this. If you sell a card to somebody, Jason, I know you're not going to take the time to call us and say, hey, I sold this card to so-and-so. He's got it. But here's what we want you to do. We want you to tell the customer, hey, it's got my name on the back of it, Okay. Um, I don't want to use somebody's here. Here, I'll use this one because nobody will know who it is. This is, no, that one does. Yes, it does. Sorry, let me use another one. Um, the Adrian Collection. Okay, this is a, this is a gentleman out of Boise, Idaho. Okay, um, so this card has his name on the back. What I would like Adrian to do um, is if he sells this card is I would like for him to tell whoever he sells it to. So if he sold it to you, Jason, I want him to say to Jason, Jason, if you'll send this card back to GMG for $5, they'll re-slab it, they'll put a new label in it, they'll clean the card, and everything will be just like new. We'll send it straight back to you. So what are you getting? Yeah, you're getting the card that you bought. We're going to give you a brand new case, brand new label with your name on the back of it. I don't think you could even slab the card for 5 bucks, let alone make a label and put a, put a new uh, name on the back of it. But what we want to be able to do is, is not only do we want to be able to secure the card for that person that's purchasing it. We also want it to look in the best shape that it can. And we also want to let them know who we are. We want to be able to earn their business, earn their trust and say, look, we're going to make this card look like brand new for you. You know, as well as I do, Jace, if you take him out of these plastic sleeves, you set them on top, you slide them back and forth across each other they get little scratches, they get Mars, they get, you know, a little degradation to the third year Michael Jordan card. I spent six, seven, eight hundred. I, you know, I really probably wouldn't display it in my living room or my dining room or somewhere like that. Send it over to us for five bucks. We'll put a new slab on it. We'll give you a new label and we'll put your name on the inside of the case on the back. If you ever lose your card, it gets misplaced. Somebody accidentally picks it up. If you own a business that you want to advertise for, you own a, 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 a card break like yourself, Jace, and if you own a, a, a hobby collector store or if you have a, a channel on cards, if you've got any kind of business at all that you're in this hobby or this collectible um, side of things, we want to be able to slide your cards for you. And we want to let people know who they were from or who you got them from or the name of your business. Okay, sounds good. All right, uh, the big one was centering. Uh, you know, the greater can be, can mm -hmm. the greater be off on the perimeter line that is set? And then also, this is going to go into with the border borderless cards, how are you determining the centering? That's like one of the big ones a lot of people are curious about. Sure. Okay, so first of all, first things first, let's talk about, let's talk about the uh, intelligent software. So a lot of times when we're talking about this new style of grading, um, there's a lot of people out there that want to call it artificial intelligence. It's not artificial intelligence. If, if we use the word artificial intelligence, or if some companies are using the word artificial intelligence, they're, they're not being total, totally 100% forthright with the customer or the person that's, that's looking at their company. Artificial intelligence is a learning process. So we look, we've looked into this for a long, long time. The co one of the co-founders, worked for IBM, Microsoft, and Facebook for about 25 years. Um, he knows the inside of a computer. He can do it in his sleep backwards. And he's the one that built the software package for us. Now, artificial intelligence is a learning process. So let me kind of break this down the easiest way that I can for everybody that's listening. Artificial intelligence learns it to a database. So if we were to send them a card of... Um, we sent him an 89 uh, uh, upper deck uh, Ken Griffey junior card. Okay. And it was the first one that the system ever saw that card in the um, computer's eyes or the software's eyes would say, that's the best card there is in the world. That's a Jim mint 10. Now 
tomorrow we get another card into our, our system. Okay, if we were using artificial intelligence, it would look at that card and it would analyze it. And Wait a minute. The other card didn't look the same as this one. So what's the difference? So then you would have to go in and you would have to define the differences between the two cards. So let's say one. Okay. So you would have artificial intelligence to start to work that actually tell. And I'll tell you how we did that. And a lot of people have said, well, how would you do that? I'll tell you how we did it. Um, one of the co-founders here at GMA Grading has well over a million cards in his collection. And we cracked over 10,000 slabs from PSA, Beckett, and SGC, took them out, ran them through an analyzer, measured them with laser precision, and we actually came up with numbers from them to put into the parameters on our system that actually have our system be able to calculate what those numbers are as it goes through the process. So we use the word intelligent software because our software we trained it we programmed it to tell what the difference is between each individual card so it's not artificial intelligence it's intelligent software okay so <clears throat> with that said i noticed on one of the questions on the on the um last video that we did this guy said well somebody could be off um in their measurement or their parameters well what I showed you guys the other day was a manual rendition of what the software does and looks for. There is no manual person that goes back and does that unless we think that the software is wrong. If we think the software is wrong, then we're going to go back and manually do it, compare our notes or our, our numbers versus what the computer's numbers are. And then we're going to go back and see if there's a, di if there's a difference or if, if the system's off. I can tell you as of right now, the system has not been wrong. The human eye has been wrong um, through several of our graders more than once, but the system never measured wrong so far, has never had a wrong measurement so far. Now, with me showing you the other day in a quick process like that, yes, um, there could be, you know, you could be off a hundredth. You couldn't be off a tenth. You couldn't be off, you know, a half an inch, but you could be off a hundredth. Now, our computer software, our, our intelligence software measures down to the 10,000th of an inch. So just to give you an idea of what a 10,000th of an inch is, a 10,000th of an inch is about a human hair. So that's how precise um, the measurements are with the intelligence software. So if you would like me to, Jason, at this Charles Barkley card, and then I would also like to take a look at a card that only has um, a border on one edge only and show people and show everybody how we go about those measurements and how to find out if that is if that uh, particular card is centered and then find out how much centered it's off if it is not centered if you if you let me do that yeah yeah go right ahead that, that's perfectly okay. fine so I've got the screen share I'm going to turn my video off here just to keep the quality of our uh of our conversation going here so i'm going to kill the video i'm going to come up by the way that's my that's my dog there in the picture <laughs> okay so this is the back of your actual charles barkley card um jason um okay. that we actually did the uh did a, did a slab for you on and um I'm going to, I got to grab a tool here. Give me just one second. I'm going to get a ruler tool. Okay. So basically if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to find the dead center of this, I, it'd be really easy to do. It's, 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 inch, it's an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to just pull this. If it'll let me come on. Bear with me here. There it is. Okay. So this is dead center of this card right here. Okay. This line. All right. Mm -hmm. So if we wanted to find it this way, we would go down. There we are. Okay. So there's our crosshair. So 
our system would find this crosshair and this dead center of this card on its own. It, it would laser measure it um, both front, back, forward, center, all four corners and all four edges. So it has eight precision measurement points. Okay. It would locate dead center and it would actually pin it to the dead center of the card. Now I have to do this manually because I have no way to go inside of our software and go, okay, show me how you did that. It doesn't work that way. So I'm going to use the ruler. I'm going to grab it here and I'm going to pull out, okay, to the edge. And then I'm going to take a measurement, 1.241, okay? So then I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Now, if I were doing this very precisionally, okay, and I were doing this, you know, on my own with nobody here in this video taking the time to do it, I could blow this thing up to about a thousand percent. I could make sure that I was dead on the money on this. And I could pull out right to the edge, okay? And I would take another recorded measurement, okay? That's 1.269. Now, I told them in the last video, I told you in the last video, 0.0479 is, is the difference between one half of a, or one grade point or a half of a grade point, okay? So right now, we are 0 0.025. So we're about a quarter of a grade point off on the centering on this card side to side, right? <clears throat> so again, I'm doing this manually. The software would not do this manually. The software would do this automatically on its own without any human intervention whatsoever. So if I go up to here and I get a measurement and then I come down to the bottom half of this card, that was 1.72 was that measurement, okay? I come down to here, I want to take another measurement, 1.767, 1.2. So it's 0 0.04 hundredths of an inch off almost identically. So 0 0.04 hundredths would be a half a point. It's not quite a full point, okay? So this card will receive a 9.5 on centering on the back. Now, let's talk about that. On the back of the card, we do not do a, a, a we do not do a deduction until it falls before below 7030. Okay. Once it falls below 7030, we do a half a point deduction. When it falls below 8020, we do a full point deduction. If it falls below 9010, we do 1.5 point deduction, and that is the most deduction we will do on a centering on the back of a card. Um, you know, the back of the card is a great piece to look at. But I don't feel and we don't feel that the back of the card sees the light of day, but about 10 to 9 to 10 percent of the time. And it's information more so than it is about pictures or about the quality of the back of the card. Now, I know you can go on to forums and you can read a lot of things about the back of a card. Some some companies are more so um, with the centering on the back versus the centering on the front. We, that's just the, the way we feel about it. And we think that we have a pretty good um, idea of what the centering is on most of the backs of those cards before it starts taking away from the eye appeal or the degradation of the card. One thing I will say is this, if the back of the card <clears throat> um, doesn't measure exactly si or under 60, 40, the card has no chance of getting a 10, absolutely zero. Um, if the card stays inside of 6040 and the, the front of the card is basically virtually flawless or impeccable, is what we like to call it, um, the card could still end up with a, a gem in 10. So I hope that answered the question of how the system reads the back of the card and what it looks for. Is that, did I answer that for you, Jason? Oh, I believe so. That, that was pretty good in depth. Yeah. Now I will, I will, will tell you something that we found out through our, through our software and a lot of people, Jason, you know me well enough. I've talked to you enough that, you know, I'm a pretty, pretty good steward of trying to learn as much as I can as I don't necessarily say I know so much. I learn a lot. So um, I turned you on to a specific card a few weeks ago um, that had a flaw in it. And I think that you've kind of introduced that card to your people um, and, and I think that a lot of people have found that, you know, we didn't miss that thing by much. It, it, it really is a pretty detrimental flaw, even though some of the other companies have already graded at a, a 10, correct? 
Correct. Well, let me point something out here in um, in these prism cards, okay? And this is no fault of anybody's. This is just the way that it works. But if you look at these lines right here, okay, these the way they've got this designed, mm -hmm. Panini actually did not measure the sides of their cards correctly to line up 100% dead even on both sides. They did not do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you why. Look at this. There is the top of that line on that card. Look how far it is from the line on this card. That was the one thing I noticed, along with the spacing there, where the uh, where it curves in at. Yep. Kind of looks like it yep. works like a half. Now, like if you moon. Go, if you will go and you will start looking at all the cards that's out there, if you will start to look. This card is about a half a point off, maybe at most, at most in centering. Mm -hmm. But if you'll start looking at cards that are dead center, they still are not dead center lined up because Panini did not actually mirror the center image of this card. They could have been off this, this much, or they could have been off this much, which would make both of these fall out of place every time it is measured, okay? So you can't just look at the card and say, that is not centered. You actually have to measure that card to make sure that it is not centered or that it is off center. Okay. Oh, that's um, okay. Okay. So let's go over to this other card that I've got pulled up. This is actually a card that you sent me, Jason. There it is. Sorry about that. Oh, no problem. No problem. Again, this, this software takes a lot of power to run it. So anyway, the, um, back to the, the, the card here. So, these are what we call definition lines. We can we can put these anywhere we want in the software package. We can tell it what we want it to look for. We want it to look for the first um, the first notable line refractor in the image. We can tell it to look for a border. We can tell it to look for a color border. Um, we can tell it to look for up to a, th a thousand things if we want to. But this is what we call a crest. And this crest, tops would have put this crest on their image and they would have wanted to have centered it left to right top to bottom okay so they would have wanted this to be very appealing to the eye and and centered so that it matches um every card that it's on because this is their um this is their logo this is their marquee piece for tops tops chrome so if we wanted to measure that i'm like we're going to start at seven jason Number seven. I just want to remember that. So, if we would have wanted, if we want to know what the difference to the edges are, so we got this edge. We're going to take a re recording, and then we're going to come from here, and we're going to take a recording. <laughs> the difference on those two is point zero one seven. Point zero one seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember, we had to be point zero four seven nine to be a full point deduction. So we're looking at less than a quarter of a point deduction on center, left and right, top and our uh, top, uh, crest to bot, crest to top, crest to left. Correct, Jason? Okay. Okay. So if we come back down here and we do that basically to the bottom left crest, which would be the Cubs logo. And if you'll notice, they're lined up for a reason because if you follow this line all the way up, Look what it does. It goes all the way up the card, right along where Tops wanted to consider that the outermost crest of the card. Okay. Same way with the bottom line here. It lines up. Tops wants this to be just as aesthetic as the top crest in the top left hand corner. So now let's take a measurement from here. Let's take a measurement from here. I'm trying to do this as precise as I can, guys. Okay, so we're looking at 0 0.056 and 0 0.045. So we're looking at 0.12. So we're looking at 12 hundredths of an inch difference between those two. Okay, again, has to be 0 0.0479 inches for it to be a one-point deduction. So again, we're looking at less than a quarter of a point or less than a quarter of a difference from this crest to the edge, from this crest to the edge. So this card would sit, would, would be a perfect 10 on centering, okay? Because 
It is not 0.04 off right or left, and it is not more than 0.24937 off on either side. Does that make sense, Jason? It does. I was going to say that should make it a 10. You covered that because I was doing the math in my head on to it. Sure. So this card is going to be a perfect gem 10 on centering. Okay. So everybody wants to know, well, how do you know, how, how, how do you tell that whenever you don't have borders to go by? I have not found a card yet that does not have a crest, some form of measurement that is centered that will measure to end to each side or top or bottom. Does that, am I, am I making that clear for everybody to kind of understand? No, it is because I picked it up and I'm not computer smart on this stuff. So, so I'm pretty sure every, if I understood the rest of them will. <laughs> yeah. So everything that a card company does, um, they, they want to make it appeasing to the eye and appealing to the eye. So they put their logo crest logo here. They put the Cubs logo down here. They're 45 degree, or, you know, they're, they're 45 from each other, top, bottom, top, left, bottom, right. Okay. They have some way of centering that card through the printing press so that they know that it lines up and is aesthetically correct every time that they print it. Now, when you start to see these cards get off, um, it's when they either start the press up or they shut the press down. It's called press wobble. These cards will get press wobble the slower the machine runs until it gets up to speed. Um, the only way I know that, Jason, is I was in the printing business for about 12 years. Um, I owned a magazine and publishing company for about 12 years. Um, have printed on uh, many, many printing machines all across the United States. So, um, <clears throat> But with that said, I hope that gives everybody a little bit better understanding of how we measure centering on a card that does not actually have a border. Um, now, some cards will just have crests and borders at the bottom, like it might have one here and one here. I want to point something out on this card, especially this one, Jason. If you'll go down here and look at this rookie shield down here in the bottom, you see it's pretty well lined up almost identically with the bottom and the side of that rookie shield. So, again, Tops did that on purpose because they wanted those to be aesthetic to the eye. Hmm, okay. And, and again, I'm not, my, I'm not the software, so I'm using this as a human, human – uh, I'm showing you this through human interface. Now, if the machine did this, if the software did this, it would be down to the 10,000th of an inch. Oh, yeah, because your angles and stuff would be different too. Sure. Because you're doing it manually now. The angles are going to yep. be off. Yep. Okay. I hope I explained that, everybody. I hope uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out and hit us on the video again, and I'd be glad to answer anything that maybe I missed or didn't, didn't quite thoroughly uh, explain to you all. Now, with the, um, the Barkley, because this goes into the next question anyhow, you know mm -hmm. how there's those print lines that are on the back? of prism and optic that you can see yep. pretty well are you yes. docking those as points or are you using as a manufacturer defect and letting it ride well that's a that's kind of a, a catch-22 um question we need to do what everybody else is doing in the industry the industry needs to find a standard that makes those the same for everybody. So I guess I would back up to the uh, the the uh, slam explosion cards, the purple and green parallels um, that you and I talked about a few weeks ago. If 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 we were to grade that as a grading as a grading company, and we were to grade that before we had saw what everybody else was doing, um, you know, we would have probably made that. It would have been a deduction. It would have been a, a major deduction. Mm -hmm. But when we started doing our research, and this, this is how passionate we are about the industry and about what we do, um, when we saw that card, one of my graders came to me and said, something's wrong. And I said, well, you can't be wrong. I said, we just got to figure out what, what, what you're doing wrong. You know, I said, the, the, the software is working. We got to figure out why your numbers aren't, aren't coming up correctly. I said, the card looks great. Well, we found out real quickly that Software wasn't wrong. The software was 100% correct. In certain instances, you've got to make uh, you've got to make a means of correcting a wrong 
so that the software can read what is wrong to, to get a grade that is correct. Um, I hope, I hope, I hope that made sense because it, it didn't make sense to me when I said it right there. So what we did is we went, we went and we started looking. We found, we found many, many of those cards that were already graded in tens, not many, several, in tens that had the exact same flaw and degradation on it that our card had. And we went, how can this be? How could that possibly happen? And then we started talking to people like yourself, Jason, and some other people that we know within the industry and the business. And we started saying, okay, what do we need to do about this? <clears throat> Hold on just one second. They're texting me to get on this other call, but I'm going to make them wait on us, Jason. <laughs> There's only one last piece to the questions really on here. So, else. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, put it to you this way. Um, we're going to find more anomalies in the system. And when we find those anomalies, we're going to reach out. We're going to search it. We're going to try to figure out what the best way to go with that is. And we're going to try to figure out the best way to handle it. And I think the best way to handle it is probably um, talking to our constituents like you, um, some other people that we follow on YouTube, some other people that we trust and uh, get the feedback from the customer and say, what, what do you guys think is fair? What do you guys think is the correct and logical way to do it? And, try to make it so that everybody feels like um, they're on the same and, 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 and as, as they like to use the, the quote level playing field. Okay. And if you find stuff like that and want to do a quick video and send it to me, I could always sure. post it and you'll get a ton of comments within probably two days on to it. Cause a sure. lot of these guys, you know, been around collecting for a while. They've been grading for a while and they have some yep. really, really good advice and opinions out there onto it. Um, yep. Royal, last piece of it all, because I know you got to get going here. Um, how you have it labeled as a 9.5 being a mint plus. Most mm -hmm. people are used to that saying like gem mint because of the 0. 0.5 scale. Is that something you're looking at changing at all, or are you going to leave it at the mint plus? You know, I, I read those comments, and, and let, let, me, let me preface this the best that I can preface it. A gem mint card um, is virtually almost flawless. It, it can have it can have a little bit of, of wiggle room, but not much. A nine five card can have just a little bit of wiggle room, um, but not much. So we like to call a nine a mint card, and when I say mint, um, it can have a it can have basically two, two flaws in it. Basically it can have, you know, it can have one mar degradation in the surface. It could be off center, just a freckle, uh, 60, 40, or it could have, um, you know, maybe one white speck in a corner. Um, in order for that to happen with a, with a, um, gym mint, it, it would never happen. It, it, we, we, we won't grade a card a gym mint 10. Um, through our software system, if that happens. A Mint 9 in our software system is as close to a Gem Mint as you can get without having the qualities of a 9. I hope that makes sense to everybody that's listening. If your card has a little white spot on a corner, it can still be a 9.5. It, it, it will never be a Gem 10 but it's not going to fall down to a nine either in the same category as a nine that can have a little bit more um, degradation to a corner and still have one imperfection on the surface, or it can have one print dot in a nine, a nine five will not have a print dot. A 10 will not have a mar in the surface. So a mint plus in our opinion is better than a mint, and I will tell you right now, Jason, 90% of the cards that we get right now, and that's right now, are fresh pack pulls. We're not grading 60s and 70s cards. We are doing some 80s cards and 90s cards that have been in storage for a long time or haven't been handled. But the bulk of our business is new cards. New, last eight years, six, six, eight years. That's the bulk of our business right now. Most of them are fresh cards, fresh pack pull cards. Less than less than ten percent of them um, don't have an issue. 
they do. Almost all of them do. I'm, I'm looking through your cards today, Jason, just to see what you sent me. I sent them through the system. I started looking at some of the numbers. Um, the score cards that you sent in, they're beautiful. But when we run them through the system, almost every one of them has got a corner issue. Um, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer there because they're still beautiful cards and they look awesome. They look awesome. But score has got an issue with some corners going on. I don't know if it's their packaging or whether it's the way that they um, – box them i don't know what it is but almost every one of them has uh more than one corner that have whiting on them so and i figured um, that would be a thing with those scores because they're throwing 40 cards in a pack yep and while they're stacked big and thick they're not packed because those will slide a lot in there even though the rookie cards are towards the center and that's why i sent those in because i did notice yep that's going to be hard easy to see on because of the orange reddish border onto it but the Trevor Lawrence the that I sent yep, you exactly. is, is a little bit harder to tell. And I was like, you could see it under magnification. And I was like, well, I want to get these graded either way. And I knew the corners onto them were going to be the hard. Yep. I actually brought your cards with me because I knew you wouldn't care. A lot of people wouldn't want me taking them out of the facility, but I knew you wouldn't give a, give a I darn. Don't idea, so. me. Yep. Okay. Well, I do appreciate it, Eric, the time. I know you got to get going here. Uh, yep. I'm sure people probably have more comments, more questions and stuff like that there. And if you see them and answer, if not, I'll compile them again. But thank you for the time and everything. I do appreciate it. Um, hopefully everything is answered that everybody wanted <laughs> on here. I think for me, just listening to the answers, I understood everything onto it. And just bringing out to light how this stuff is done, I think, is dramatically going to change it. You're the only company out there that's done this. No, everybody else has it like as a hidden secret out there in a way. And this has brought to light a lot of things for people so they can see, you know, what is going on with the intelligence being used. Well, I think everything that we do here, anybody could do, Jason. Um the, the difference between what we do and somebody else doing it is we actually have the person that can write the software and make the software work. I couldn't do that. I'm not the guy that writes the software, makes the software work. Um, at the end of the day, it's not rocket science. Um, actually, the gentleman that writes the software, one of the co-founders writes the software for us. He, he said to himself, he said, I can't believe nobody's done this yet. And I really do believe that there's some other companies out there that are starting to catch on or starting to understand that there's an easier way. One thing I do want to point out, um, maybe that the customers want to know, everybody thinks that this um, intelligent software system is faster than the way that it's actually slower. Um, it takes time to run the cards, to scan the cards in, to run them through the system, to get, to get the uh, parameters and the, and the scores back, and then you have to match them up to make sure that they're correct. So it takes more time to do it this way. What it does, though, is it cuts down on mistakes. It cuts down on wrong grades, bad grades, or inadequate grades. It makes sure that the card gets of the, of the same process, of the same caliber, gets the exact same grade as the next card. Um, I think that's detrimental to the industry we continue to make strides with the smart technology smart and intelligent trying to figure out ways to every card or with a five dollar card i think is of um, the cards that we collect are going to continue to be gain in popularity and value because it's honest, it's true. I think if we continue to let um, grading companies that don't put in a process just have me or somebody else look at them with the human eye and go, ah, I think that's a seven or I think it's a nine. You know, I don't think that there's the, the viability there. Um, let's face it. I, you go to work, Jason, every day. I go to work every day. I'm not on my A game every day. You're not on your A game every day. Some days you'd rather be somewhere than at work. Um, the computer doesn't have any other option. It can't run out and play a game around the golf or it can't go down and eat dinner at Buffalo Wild Wings and watch a ball game. It's only got one process. That's to hit a button and do its job. So with the, with the intelligent technology and software that we're using, I 
think it's going to cut down on the mistakes. And uh, I think that it, it makes for a more wholesome individual that's sending it in and spending hard on money for their, uh, for their cards and their hobby that they love. That's very true. Very true on that. All right, everybody. So as you can see, when I was telling you, there, there were some parts in there that it's a little scratchy. I couldn't even fix. So I'm not like real good on computer editing. So if there was some skips to it to where you could tell there's a break, that's because we redid a take onto that part, especially where he was going over the cards themselves with the program. And when you're using that program, we uh, basically know that it's going to take away from your CPU usage, which is going to cause that onto it. Uh, I'm not too sure, you know, how much, you know, better it would have got quality wise with it, but we did get what we wanted to out of it. And it's more of a live question and answer going back and forth versus me saying the questions and then saying, Hey, do a video and answer them. So I understood where he said he didn't want it to be looked like it was scripted out to where he had time. And, um, I guess you see more of a thought process onto it. I gave him some pieces that I wanted to see in the video originally then send the questions beforehand just in case, uh, you know, something would have happened out there to where my feed was not getting to him real well. He would have be able to still have the question in front of him to, you know, understand what I'm saying. And that, that's just one of those things when you start doing stuff on Zoom, you got to be cautious with. And we, we went through it. We worked through it. So hopefully that answered a lot of questions out there. As you guys can see, they already implemented changes on the label itself, just from your feedback. So that's great. I like it because I was in shock they already put that into play or, you know, onto their slabs because it shows they're listening to the customer. That's something I've harped about for years. And anybody that's been on a channel more than probably a, a month will see I'm always big about customer service. Always have been. With that being said, you know, there's going to be other changes. It's going to be with the community as a whole, you know, saying, hey, can you look at this, this, and this. Now, I understand they're not going to be able to make every single change out there, but they're listening to us, which which is a good thing. It's a very good thing, in my own opinion, on to it. The borderless card, wow. That's all I can say onto that. I mean, that was a lot of knowledge right there to know how they determine, you know, the centering onto it. I, I never knew that. And with his background being from um, doing, like, magazines and stuff like that there, the knowledge is there onto, you know, the I guess you could say with kind of with the program, not the programming, but the program itself to really help illustrate how it goes. And if you guys heard, because I did send some scorecards into them to get graded, and I was worried about the thick packs. I've always wondered, you know, with them, because of them not being very tight and loose and being able to bounce around, and the corners are dinged up on them. I, I've seen a couple of them before I sent them, and I just wasn't too sure because my magnification is a little bit bigger than what the average is that they're using or PSA, whoever it may be out there. Uh, only because I got bad eyesight anymore. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to anybody. But it, it's phenomenal with that there to see that. Hopefully he answered the back part too as well with everybody. A lot of information on to it. Um, with that being said, I do just want to make sure, see if everybody's good with it or not. But if they come across the card that has, you know, a known issue on to it that they're catching... If I post it up there, is everybody willing to give feedback onto it on how, you know, should it, you know, be docked? It was basically, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe two, three, four weeks ago, I posted a video about a known defect into a card, which other companies were giving tens on to it. You know, you have to follow suit, and like he was saying, it would be nice if they could all just talk together on where they're going to go with it because of a known defect. Uh, the next part up after this is probably going to try to do a live Q&A with everybody. I'm not too sure how far down the road. I don't have StreamYard, so I'm trying to think how to actually do it. I may just do it off of my iPad and put it in front of us type deal. I know it'll look cheesy. I got it. But I'm not paying StreamYard to do dual screen stuff onto here. And with Zoom... 
it, there's no RTMP that I can use onto the software I use to stream with. But I'm going to dig into it and look at it because I think a live Q&A would be great with the chat and everything. So that's going to be the next uh, part of the series down the road. Give, give me a few weeks onto it so I can uh, work that basically in and then to make sure that the stream and everything is going to come across pretty good. So I'll probably hit a couple people up. I might try doing like a Facebook Live or something with them off of my iPad and then put that in front just to see how that would look. I know, corny. I got it, corny guys. <laughs> Low tech. I'm not that smart. If somebody else has another way of doing it, please feel free to share it, email it, whatever you want to me. Um, that way we can try to make the video a little bit better for when the Q&A comes out onto it. Yes, I know somebody's going to say, oh, he uses blue painter's tape. Yes, I do. Tons of it. Tons. I got rolls of it down here. Uh, that being said, though, I appreciate everybody's thought and opinion. Uh, with GMG, they reached out originally to me. We had some in-depth conversations on to it. And I really like that they've gone out and listened to the feedback off the video. And before I even started giving him, like, a roll-up of it all, they already started implementing changes in the label. I think that's great. I really do. So we'll get to see those on my next submission that comes back from GMG. And we'll hopefully I still have a, a couple of the cards here left from the original one. And we'll just try to compare labels onto it. If not, I'll just get some pictures and put them up on the screen too. But all right, everybody. Again, thank you so much for your support to the channel, watching the videos. I do appreciate it. I will catch you all next time.